If you followed the last movie, you've created two lofts for the light cycle trails but haven't animated them yet. As mentioned before, lofts are rather old technology in 3ds Max and they are mostly used as a modeling tool. Select the yellow loft and go to the Modify panel. Notice the rollout name deformations. Although these are also meant as modeling tools, they can be used to create some interesting animation effects. Take a look at the Scale Deformation dialog. It shows a graph, linear at this time, that represents the scale of the loft. Currently, it is set at a constant 100% scale, from 0% to 100% of the loft. Notice what happens if you bring the 100% mark closer to zero scale. The loft starts as intended, based on the size of the original cross-section, but gets smaller as it sweeps toward the end. You can add scale factors by adding control points to the deformation curves. The great part in all this is that you can actually animate these control points. If you have made any changes, click the Reset icon. Add two control points to the graph. At this time, they still represent 100% scale. Their percent value representing their position on the path is also listed. Set the second point at 5%. and the third point at 10%. Select both the third and fourth points and set their scale value to zero. Set the third point to 6% of the path. Try 5.5 or even 5.1% to bring it closer to the second point. Select both second and third points and move them horizontally and see the effect in the viewport. Now imagine yourself animating this effect. What follows is a common way of animating a loft. It works really well for motion graphics for animating ribbons and all sorts of sweeping logos. Set the second point to 0.01% of the path with a scale value of 100. Set the third point to 0.02% of the path with a scale value of 0. The loft all but disappears inside the light cycle's rear wheel. Go to the last frame, frame 300, and enable Auto Key. Change the third point's percent value to 99.99. .99. Select the second point. Remember, the second point at this time lies on 0.01%. Relocated to 99.98%. Exit the Scale Deformation dialog. If you scrub the animation, you'll notice that the loft's animation doesn't match that of the light cycles. The light cycles animation is linear. Exit Auto Key Mode. To adjust the animation of the loft, right-click and choose Curve Editor. Expand the object Loft Track and the Deformation Scale Tracks. Select all the keys and set their tangents to Linear. Scrub the animation again. This time, it should work much better. Next, you need to repeat the loft animation on the blue trail. However, the blue trail needs to end when the blue light cycle meets its doom. In other words, the blue light trail doesn't get all the way to 100% of the path. Select the blue loft and use the path value to pinpoint the percent value of the path where the loft should end. It looks like the animated loft should stop at path percent 86.4 at around frame 259. Like you did earlier, create two scale deformation points and set them as you did earlier. This time though, make sure Auto Key is on and go to frame 259 
where the animated loft should stop dead in its tracks. Animate the third control point so that its percent value reads 86.4, as you have identified it as a collision point. Animate the second point at the same moment in time to reach 84.399%, a fraction before the third point as they cannot share the same value. Go to the Curve Editor and set the tangents to linear as you did before. Test the animation. One thing is left to be done with the light trails. In the next movie, you will create and apply a material with gradient and opacity properties.